watching again for 2021. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, no, just want to encourage you in the in the eternally significant good work that you're doing in coaching. Um, my inbox today alone, I had five messages from people singing the praises of the importance that it's been that coaches have walked with them and requests from two different bishops for more coaching support. Um, this is the way into the future. And um, our, our God, Emmanuel, we are manifesting that as we journey with others. And so thank you for your dedication to coming to meetings like this where you can be encouraged and empowered and sharpen those skills. Um, Dina is doing a fantastic job in helping to coordinate all of you in the Pacifica Synod. And God bless each of you for the unique work that you are doing um, in your particular part of God's kingdom. And it's just my honor to be here and to um, listen to the wisdom shared. And I do apologize in advance. I've been pulled into a meeting in 30 minutes. So I will, you will see me drop off at that point. But I'm available to you if I can support any one of you um, in a specific way, please reach out to me and let me know. I'll put my email in the chat area so you have access to that. And I pray for you. So thank you, friends. Thank you, Jill. Thank you for your time. And, and for all of you uh, that don't know her, she's an absolutely amazing leader um, for our larger church. So thank you, Jill. So... Oh, yeah, I love you. So welcome to those of you who are new here. Welcome. This is a monthly gathering of Coaching for All Seasons here to serve. We are honored you have chosen to spend this time, this next hour with us. I am Dina Ely, the Synod's Coaching Coordinator. Our amazing Synod Coaching Team has designed this gathering and invested many hours to provide encouragement and support to you as we navigate the unknowns in our life. Our mission is to create a safe space for exploring responses to uncertain times and for discerning steps forward. Today's presentation is on grateful living. We will explore what living in gratitude might look and feel for each of us in this moment. We invite you to allow yourself to be open and hear what God might be speaking to you in this presentation. Feel free to position yourself in a place to receive and make this space comfortable for you. You may participate with or without your cameras and please mute your mics. To begin our time together, Pastor Daryl will lead us in a prayer to center our hearts and minds. And then Sarah Tease, our wonderful coach and Stephen's ministry leader will lead us in today's presentation. Thank you, Dina, and it's good to see all of you this morning as, or afternoon, if you're in Jill's time zone <laughs> and other time zones perhaps out there. It's good to see all of you, literally see all of you on my screen here. Before I pray, I'm going to actually um, begin with reading Psalm 126. And before I say or read the words of Psalm 126, I want to set the stage because so often we hear a scripture passage and don't know the context and the content from which it was, it was birthed. And this particular psalm happens to be when the Israelites, Israelites had been in exile in Babylon, and now they were released from that exile back in their, their homeland. And it's a psalm of gratitude, a psalm of being grateful that they now have had their, their fortunes restored. You'll hear that echoed in the psalm. And so I just wanted to kind of set the stage as it is a psalm of gratitude. So the psalmist writes, when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. 
In the prayer this morning, you're going to hear um, the name Dog Hammarskjöld. Um, for those who may not know who that was, he was a Lutheran, a Swedish um, economist, and the second United Nations Secretary General. I mentioned that just in case you happen to hear that name and think, what did he just say in that prayer? So I wanted to give a little introduction to who that person is. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. God who is above us. God who is among us. God who became us in the person of Jesus. We gather as your people to experience again the joy of receiving your gifts. As we begin a new year, our hearts are filled with hope, with the hope of possibilities, grateful for what you have in store for us. Yet if we are honest, we also face apprehensions and anxieties. O oh God, calm those fears with your ever-present comforting spirit. Create in us a sense of awe for the beauty we see around us. Lord, we lift up our hearts in deep gratitude and appreciation for what you have given us, especially for that which we take for granted. Inspire us to move forward as a people of faith, hope, and love, and with good courage, lead us into a future where you greet us with open arms. Finally, gracious God, with Dog Hammarskjöld, let us also say, for all that has been thanks, for all that shall be, yes. And all of this we pray in your holy name, O God. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Daryl. That was beautiful. Welcome, everyone. I ask you to walk into this session with deep, calming breaths before we begin. Inviting the Holy Spirit into your system through the atmosphere of this earth, which gives us life and breath. What if you discovered that living with awareness and intention, focusing on what makes you feel alive, grateful and in wonder, allows you to live longer, inspire others, experience joy, hold pain and grief with compassion, and deepen love, generosity, and respect for all life. Grateful living is a way of life that does all of the above. In so doing, contributes to a peaceful, thriving, and sustainable world held as sacred by all. In 2006, Brother David Stendelrast recorded a short audio meditation about gratefulness, set to music by award-winning composer Gary Malkin as an introduction to a network for grateful living. The meditation spoken spontaneously by Brother David flowed from a heart honed by decades of prayer, practice, and sharing, and was given the title, A Good Day. In 2007, gratefulness.org was created, um, and they created a video version with hand-picked public domain images from around the world and uploaded it to YouTube. Since its release and transition into 13 languages, A Good Day has received over a million views and has been used in countless ways in therapeutic settings, spiritual centers, business meetings, prisons, hospitals, homeless shelters, and schools. The words of Brother David are timeless. The internet is not. So it has been updated. And at a time when nationalism and isolationism is on the rise in countries around the world, this video illustrates our shared humanity, community, and potential to connect with and heal one another. This video is for all of us. And we hope that you will enjoy and share a grateful day. Just one moment while I do the 
technology thing. You think this is just another day in your life? It's not just another day. It's the one day that is given to you. Today. It's a gift. It's the only gift that you have right now and the only appropriate response is gratefulness. If you learn to respond as if it were the first day in your life and the very last day, then you will have spent this day very well. Begin by opening your eyes and be surprised that you have eyes you can open. That incredible array of colors that is constantly offered to us for pure enjoyment.
Please close your eyes while you take three slow, deep breaths. Then open your eyes and consider the invitation from Henry David Thoreau to look around you, look inside yourself. We must learn to reawaken and keep ourselves awake, not by mechanical aids, but by an infinite expectation of the dawn. In the midst of the hustle and bustle of busy life, it can require effort and commitment to truly notice and stay awake to the people, events, and moments in our lives. With numerous demands on our attention, it's easy to miss the wisdom of our hearts and our bodies, the richness of leaning into what's here now, and the opportunities and unexpected gifts that can exist within difficult or challenging situations. In short, whenever we are not alert to what's happening in and around us, we miss the opportunity to live our lives to the fullest and to offer our best selves to the world. Henry David Thoreau bids us to keep ourselves awake with an infinite expectation of dawn. What a powerful and evocative invitation. Please enjoy this next video, Stop, Look, and Go. something that we know about everyone we meet anywhere in the world and that is that all of us want to be happy. By experiencing, by becoming aware that every moment is a given moment as we say. It's a gift. You haven't earned it, you haven't brought it about in any way. You have no way of assuring that there will be another moment given to you. Grateful living, that's the most valuable thing that can ever be given to us. senses for this wonderful richness that is given to us. Whatever life offers to you in that present moment, if we take this opportunity, go with it. of alert aliveness. Today, we encourage you to 
set an invitation to look around you. Look inside yourself and notice how simple, how simply setting this intention can impact you. In all of your interactions, give your full attention to the person with whom you are communicating. Notice how that impact changes things. When going for a walk or traveling in your car, tune in to your surroundings to help ground yourself in the body. Notice the feel of your feet on the ground or your hands on the steering wheel. At the day's end, reflect upon what you noticed today and explore how it feels and what might have changed as a result of following your intention to look around you, look inside yourself, and then write about your experiences in a journal and share them with someone. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we gather together in your holy name to enrich our hearts and minds to learn together and from one another. We know that you ask, we know what you ask of us each day to love each other as you have loved us. We know what we need to do and yet we always fall short. You have asked us to seek you, to forgive and repent, to give of ourselves in your name. Yet we always doubt your love. We question our own worth we judge and condemn each other. We forget the example of Jesus' life. We forget his sacrifice for us. We forget the love you have shown us in the sacrifice of your son. Open our hearts to all you have given us, Lord. Teach us to be faithful, to trust in you and your promises, to love and forgive. But most of all, Lord, teach us to live a grateful day. Amen. Sorry about that. Thank you, Sarah, for leading us in such a beautiful and powerful way. We now have the opportunity to take our experiences into breakout sessions for further discussion. Each room will have a coach to facilitate the conversation. I invite each of us to share openly and honestly the truth of who we are and how we are doing in this moment as individuals and as leaders. Reflecting on these questions, what are you most grateful for in this moment? What makes you hopeful? What unexpected things have brought you gratitude? I know this video has, it's been absolutely beautiful. You will have the opportunity to join your breakout session. I will uh, open up the rooms for you now. I will give you a two more minute warning. We'll have about 25 minutes or so to be with each other. And um, I, I invite you to have a wonderful conversation. Here we go. Well, welcome back. I would love to hear what kind of conversations you had by not breaking any confidences. Would someone like to share? I think I can do that without breaking any confidences. Um, but the, the people... Uh, with whom I joined in our breakout room were just exceptional in their sense of gratitude. They, uh, uh, they both expressed that they go for walks and uh, talked about uh, one walk involving uh, a combination of storm and sun in which they saw seven different rainbows and talked about the impact of that. And the other, uh, the other person in the, in the breakout room mentioned uh, just the joy in watching the sunsets. And, uh, you know, so it, uh, again, remarkable attitudes of gratitude, of gratefulness, and it was just a pleasure to be in the breakout room with them. Thank you.
And I think with our great little group, um, there was a lot of gratefulness just for how nature is regenerating um, and very much for people in their lives and their congregations and how those people are just stepping up unexpectedly, taking opportunities and giving of themselves. So the gratefulness again was, was, was in their hearts and very present in their lives and lots of hope. I think, that's the other thing is so much hope. And by the way, just for you synod people, there was a lot of gratitude for the synod staff. Awesome. One, one thing I'd like to share is, um, is of course, the, um, those who I was with, it was wonderful to hear, to hear their stories of what makes them grateful, but um, and there were some things that were really big things to be grateful for, but then we also lifted up those small things to be grateful for, you know, whatever that happens to be, because sometimes I think we get so caught up in gratitude being the big things, and it's like, let's just look at the small things, and um, also it was lifted up about how sometimes it's difficult to be grateful, but the more you start thinking about it, the more it becomes easier and easier and easier to see how grateful we truly can be and how much gratitude we can give to God and to our fellow brothers and sisters that we walk this journey with. Um, so I think just again, looking at those small ways to be grateful is powerful. Some of our conversation was about the importance of mindfulness and also the difficulty of remaining present in the moment and uh, how challenging that is, it, even though it's very rewarding, um, just as human creatures, we're, we're always tempted to think ahead or to wonder or to fret. Um, and grounding ourselves in the present is a good way to let gratitude flow. Dina, can I go ahead and share? Oh, please, Lynn. Okay. Um, I think what we, we found was that we were grateful for our families and our bubble of safety. And also that other relationships that we formed, say by Zoom, rather than just seeing somebody in church, got much deeper, much more personal, much more intimate. Um, there was a chance to just be one-on-one -on -one with people in a way that sometimes you can't at the end of the church service and you just see each other for a few seconds and give a quick hug and how you doing? Oh, I'm good, we'll have to get together. And then, then you don't see them until the next Sunday. So there are opportunities to get closer to friends with Zoom, our church friends through Zoom. Um, and hopefulness, um, what are we hopeful for? We're hopeful for the planet, that things can be done to help our planet with climate change. Uh, hopeful for our democracy, that maybe um, things will happen with different leadership that will be healthy for all of us. And just maybe it's part of the new year, but just a hopefulness for change that is positive, that is God-filled. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very beautiful, very beautiful responses. Anyone else like to share? Well, thank you for those that did share and thank you all for participating. As we wrap up, I just have a few reminders for us. There will be a recording of this time together on the coach's web page for the Synod. Um, so you can go to the Pacifica Synod and on the coaching under ministry teams, it's under coaching. So you'll find all of our recordings there. And actually, since we have just finished with some time, I'd like to um, offer us a, a quick Zoom poll. So if we could just take a few minutes and I will um, start the poll and this will help us for future coaching 
um, gatherings. So I'm going to go ahead and launch it. For those of you who haven't joined us before, this is the first time we're doing this poll. We've Thank had follow-up emails in the past, you, um, but we were hoping that if we had the opportunity, we could get some uh, immediate direct feedback. So thank you for participating. Thank you, Jerry. Yes, absolutely. Since we had a few minutes and I've had it ready to go, I spontaneously just decided, and it would be very helpful for us as we plan for the next few months. Actually, the poll is the best way to go. Zoom has that ability, so. It, 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 yeah, and, and, and we have you all here, so we have your undivided yeah, attention. Yeah, results, yeah. yeah so, so thank you for taking that extra time to help us to help you. And Dina, are you going to mention the February topic? Yes, I was getting to that, but you can go ahead, Jerry, please. Oh, I'll defer to Sarah. <laughs> I love our team. <laughs> Sarah. I'm sorry, I've got kids. <laughs> no. um, <laughs> uh, our next speaker for the month of February is um, a young woman who works for the ELCA. She works for the uh, youth gathering worship team. Her name is uh, Tyra Dennis. And, uh, and she is also a young person of color um, who has a leadership role at a very young age. And so she has a lot of perspective. And, um, and I think that what she all have to share with us about her work and her experiences doing that work are going to teach many of us who already have leadership roles and really need to focus on how to bring youth in. Um, and also how to diversify um, our, our leadership congregation members. Um, so I encourage you to join us for that. It's, I think it's gonna be a wonderful experience. So that would be the first Tuesday in February, same time, same place. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So it's 12 o'clock. I just wanna say a special thank you to all of you who participated. What a lovely experience this has been. Thank you for your time. And as we go, let me um, just close us in a word of prayer. So let us pray. Lord God, you have called your servants to venture of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us go and have a grateful day and we'll see you in a month. Thank so you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Terry.